Hey everyone, it's time to make your own gear. We're gonna up the ante this time around and tackle the do-it-yourself under quilt. So stick around and enjoy. So here's some of the basic things that we need to get started. As we move along in this build, we'll introduce a few more things. I picked up some Tepeda uh, membrane tin, I think it is, from Ripstop by the Roll. It's a Moroccan blue that I'm thinking of using on the outer shell and a charcoal gray on the inner shell. Uh, then again, I might reverse that. I also have some pre-cut one and a half inch no -seam mesh that we'll use for the baffling. And you see here, I have far more material than I need. And that is because I plan to make both a top quilt and an under quilt. The first thing we got to do is, what we need to do is measure out our length. Now one of the things that I'm going to do is fold this fabric over uh, before I measure out the total length that I want so that we're measuring uh, from a straight edge and then also I'm limited in the amount of space I have in here. This is a, I mean it's a good sized living room but when you start dealing with yards of fabric, it can be a little tougher. And so we just want to fold over our edge, our total length. I did decide we're gonna use the blue for the inner fabric and then have it curled over for the side channels to give like an accent color. I think that's gonna look really nice. You know, it's worth taking your time, just fiddling with the fabric, making sure everything is nice and smooth and even. So our total desired length is 78 inches. But to achieve that, we need to account for the side channels that we're gonna roll over and and use for suspending the under quilt. And to do that, I'm going to add basically three inches to each side. So we're going to add uh, a total of six inches to the desired length, 78 add six, puts us at 84 inches total. Then we need to divide that in half for measuring our folded distance. And we're going to be in good shape. So we need what? 42? Oh, so close. 45. So we need to come back. Uh, yeah. Roll that back a little bit. do is just mark where I want to cut this and then I'm going to run a piece of masking tape across so that I know that I'm cutting it exactly where I want.
let's do our outer fabric. So the next thing we need to do is cut down this width. All right, so we're looking at a total width of 58 inches. And that's going to account for a finished width of 45 inches. And then we're going to have nine baffles. And each baffle on the outer shell, which we're going to use the gray, gray for the outer shell, is going to be one inch wider than the inner shell to give us that differential cut between the outer shell and the inner shell. So nine baffles will add an inch. So 45 plus nine inches. Uh, then we have to also account for uh, nine in, or an inch because we're expecting uh, about an inch height uh, on the on the inner baffles, and so we have to account for that extra inch on the width. So we'll add two more inches for the side walls, and then we'll also add another inch uh, on each side for seam allowance. So that's going to give us a total of 58 inches total width to achieve a 45 width differential cut under quilt. And this is where I made my mistake the first time around on my, on my previous under quilt, is I didn't realize the disparity between, you know, trying to, the, to measure out the widths and, and adding all of these things. Tell you what, if we want 58 inches this material is exactly 60 inches wide. So we could take an inch off of each side to get rid of that jagged, unfinished edge. And that's going to get us where we need. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this, uh, but something to keep in mind is with these fabrics, there's a kind of a dull side and a shiny side. Now, I treat the shiny side as the wrong side, as the, the part that's gonna be on the inside that touches the down. Because what they do to make these fabrics downproof is actually run a, a hot roller or something that seals one side of the fabric against down makes the pores very small. And I want that side to be the side that faces the down. So when I sew my baffling material on, I wanna make sure that I'm measuring and I'm working on what would be considered the wrong side or the shiny side. Uh, I have, again, I want a finished length of 45 inches with a total of nine baffles and we wanted to add an inch to each baffle for the outer uh, material, which this is. And so each one of these need to be six inches, but the two outer baffles need to be another inch in itself to account for the rounding effect on the side wall. And then we also accounted for, uh, I believe it was an inch on either side for seam allowance which seems a little excessive, but I'm okay with that. And so we need to start one inch in, or two inches in, 
and then six inches, mark six inches for each one. You know, the other thing I didn't do on my first quilt was a differential cut. And so I feel like I lose a lot of my loft. masking tape is put it about a half inch or so over the material I mean, the goal for today is to get at least this outer shell completed and sewn and ready to go on the inner. Uh, I only have probably like a lot of you limited time to work on these kinds of things. My uh, family will be home soon and then they will take precedence over my time as they should. But it's kind of a, you know, it doesn't matter how much time you have. You work on it when you can, where you can. And if it takes you a little bit of extra time, so what? You know, this is probably going to take me several days. I'll work on it for a couple hours after work. Maybe after the kids go to bed. Now to help manage all of this fabric when I'm sewing, sewing these channels, these baffles, I'm just gonna use some clothespins, roll this up on uh, the length side. And that should help us out quite a bit. Now, as you can see, this thread, when you buy it, you know, you pay three, 370 or something for one spool. It's, it's a fair amount. It'll last you a while. I've been using that charcoal gray to throw uh, an under quilt, a top quilt, a pack cover, uh, some practicing. And then I also got, I, I recently finished a tarp, a charcoal gray tarp. So I got a lot of use out of it. Let's spin this bobbin up and see what it looks like. Here we have it. Our first stitch is done. Now let's peel this tape off and see what it looks like. Hmm. Well, I think that's kind of a fail. Uh, I'm not sure that this masking tape is going to do the trick. What I might try to do, I'm going to finish peeling the tape off this one seam 
because it does come off. It's just, it's a pain in the butt to get off. And then I'm going to retape the, uh, the next seam with a, a blue painter's tape, or I think I've got some green painter's tape lying around somewhere, and see if that's any better in terms of being able to pull it up after the stitch. And yeah, we live and we learn, right? All right, I've replaced one baffle with green frog tape, which is a painter's tape. Let's do a couple inches of this and see how it uh, peels off. Now, before I get too far into this, I've got a few inches sewn. Let's uh, pull it off and see if this does any better. And we have a winner, I think. That uh, seems to be peeling off a lot easier. A little bit of tape left over. So something occurred to me. I could be smarter about how I'm using the, the tape. And instead of trying to sew through it, I could put the tape on the other side of the baffle material and then just have that holding the mesh in place. And then I'll have, I'm free to sew the other side with no issues. So instead of spending more money on uh, special products, uh, there's no reason why I can't use the masking tape. It's probably how other people are using the masking tape and I didn't realize it. Uh, but you know, the only way to learn is to do. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So I'm going to rework this, uh, the outer shell material, put the tape on the opposing side of the mesh material so that I can go back and sew. Curious about what the other side looks like. There's our stitching. Looks very good. It's important that you just keep trying. Eventually you'll figure out what works best for you. Alright. The last few baffles have been retaped. We're going to finish this puppy up. Now you're probably wondering at this point, why go through all this effort to deal with the different types of tape and, and whatnot. And the reason is I hate pinning this mesh material onto this fabric. It sucks. Uh, I'm, I'm after something better. Now the masking tape isn't a perfect idea but it's certainly better than trying to, to pin, uh, to, to mark a line and, and pin all of this mesh baffle material down. So, I mean, to each their own, if you want to do the pinning route, go right ahead. It doesn't matter. Now for the inner shell, we've cut it to size. And then I've added a piece of masking tape to mark where each baffle should meet. Now this part seems to be the toughest part for most people. I know it was the part that I had the toughest time with deciding how, it, how you were supposed to attach the outer shell and the inner shell together with the baffle. And so the purpose of using the masking tape is just to give us a, a guideline. We're not going to sew into it. We're just going to use it as a guideline to lay over the outer piece, the outer shell, 
and, and stitch the other side of our baffle material to the inner shell. And then take it one baffle at a time from the outer edge all the way in. So this is where the magic happens. We gotta pick a side to start from. I'm gonna start from the right side. I'm gonna take this edge of the outer fabric, the outer shell, and I'm gonna sew it along this marker. And of course, you don't have to use tape. Uh, in the past, I've just used a, a chalk line or you know whatever, you can just something that you can follow. I'm gonna use tape because it was easy to put down and it stays. So I'm gonna sew this seam and then eventually this will get rolled over to create our suspension channel and it'll hide that seam as well. So once that's sewn, I will open this up, remove this piece of tape, move to our next, our first baffle. I will then sew this baffle material right along that tape, right along that marker, but not on the tape itself. Remove this piece of tape and then move to the next baffle and just work my way down. As always, before we start one of these long threads or one of these long seams, make sure you're checking your bobbin. not gonna lie finishing that first stitch when you start bringing the outer and the inner shells together you finally feel like you're starting to make a quilt now here's where we have our outer shell pulled back showing us our first baffle you see that with the light like that we have our first baffle we're lining that up with the tape we're going to run a seam right next to that tape all the way down. Then we'll remove this piece of tape, fold this over to the next baffle, and run it along this piece. And we'll do that again and again until we get through all nine baffles. Slow and steady wins the race. Now that we have our first baffle sewn in, you can start to see that differential cut, you know. The inner layer is laid flat, and this outer layer has all this extra fabric between the five inches. This outer fabric has six inches, and the inner fabric, inner uh, shell is only five inches. So we have an extra inch of fabric that's going to allow this to poof up and stay lofted even when we stretch the inner layer flat. Now if you are finding yourself having a tough time managing all the fabric, you know, as you go you can roll this extra fabric up and just pin it. Some clothes pins.
popping. I didn't check it on the last run. And sure enough, it ran out. Do you? Once you try to make one of these quilts, the cost that these uh, cottage vendors are charging, they seem really high when you first look at them. Like, man, who would pay, you know, three, four hundred dollars for a quilt, right? And the reality is, yeah, the cost of the materials is pretty high to start with. So they might have, if they're charging you $300 for a quilt, they might have $100, $150 or more tied up in just material costs, right? And then it doesn't take long to realize how much work actually goes into this. I mean, quite honestly, after making couple quilts and working on this quilt, the prices that some of these cottage vendors are charging is a steal. You know, these guys have got a lot of time and effort in designing their quilts and fabricating them to, the, uh, to a very high standard. Which, I mean, most people aren't going to be able to replicate in their home. You know, you can get a good functional quilt. Uh, the one I'm making right now is going to be a, I think it's going to be a great quilt. It's going to meet my needs, but it's not going to be the same kind of quality that some of these other vendors are going to be able to produce. Now that feels really good. All the baffles are sewn in. we got the extra material on the sides to roll over and build our channels out of. Coming along. So the next thing we're going to do is sew one end. We'll probably do this end down here. We're going to sew a seam to close off the bottom. We're going to call that the foot box or the foot. Not a top quilt, so it's just the foot of the uh, under quilt. We'll sew that closed, and then we'll be ready to roll these channels all the way around, and that'll leave openings for us to stuff our down in. And once we get the down stuff, we'll come back and finish off that last seam and be good to go. This is coming along. Now what I'm going to do with this next seam is just sew this shut once. When we do that, we'll have to pleat because there is more material for the outer shell than there is the inner shell and so we'll have to probably pleat in the middle just to kind of tighten things up and then once we have that seam we'll uh we'll do the rolling and do the channel now i did go through and trim all of the extra baffling material and cut all the threads that were still left you see here I've got the, the first baffle. I'm about to sew it shut on one end. I'm going to create just a little pleat like that, fold it over, and run the stitch across.
Again, don't worry about this being a rough edge because when we fold this over and do our channel, it's going to cover all this up. shut and pleated which will help shape things Got enough material here we're actually going to roll this over twice like that and then sew it shut and that's going to make for a nice good strong suspension channel now something else to keep in mind is when we do this corner and we would roll this over so and then roll that over and so we wouldn't have any holes for our suspension system so the first thing I'm gonna do is roll this corner at an angle I'm gonna run a stitch across this so that when we roll this over so we'll roll it in towards the outer shell. We'll run our stitch just straight across and that'll allow us when we roll this channel over we'll have our opening and it won't interfere with the other channel. So let's do these four or we're going to do we have two corners to do real quick because the other two corners we haven't worked with yet. We'll do that after we're done stuffing. So now we have it rolled over once. We're just going to go Roll it one more time, and then run another stitch over top of all of this, just like that. Now the downside to sewing it twice is it adds another seam line, so aesthetically it's not as nice. Man, it's a lot easier to do it that way. So you have to decide what's best for you and your skill level. Well, that'll be plenty of a channel for the shot cord. There we go. So it's time to, finally time to stuff the down. I don't really have the light to film that process. It's uh, about nine o'clock at night here. I don't have enough lights to, uh, to show that. Needless to say, I'm gonna try a, a new contraption. And then maybe in a future video, I'll do a more detailed how to stuff down in one of these quilts. So the idea here will be to have all of my down I'm going to measure it out of this little uh, container. Might be difficult to see. And like I said, I'll, I'll do another tutorial another day. But what I have is my shop vac set up to blow. And that is attached to this little PVC pipe contraption. I'll leave a link down below on the forum post that I learned about this. And we'll be able to suck the down up through the bottom and blow it out the top and then we'll use a scale to kind of keep track of how much down we're using chicken didn't have a chance 
Stuffing is done. And we just gotta close it up. So the last channel. And for the big reveal, we have our finished under quilt. So for the suspension, I went with something similar to Hemet gear, where I ran one continuous piece of shock cord through both channels up to a beaner. And then on all four sides, I've got these line locks with one piece of shock cord connecting two line locks to kind of keep this from sliding back. For the end channels, I chose to go with a half inch ribbon versus the shock cord. In the past, I've used shock cord in these end channels and I wasn't as happy with the way it felt uh, when tightening and loosening them. So I'm going to give this half inch ribbon a shot. I think this is the way Jacks are better does theirs. I ended up putting about one ounce of down in each baffle. The total weight with suspension system is just over 17 ounces. You know, I'm super excited with the way this turned out. Uh, it's amazing what you can do just on your dining room table and living room floor. Uh, it's going to be a great addition to my kit. I hope this helps inspire you to get out and make your own gear. Until next time, thanks for watching.